Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and I've got some bins to be fed. Yesterday I started into feeding some of my red wigglers. Today I'm going to finish off feeding the rest of them. Up until last week I was trying to deal with all of my red wigglers at once. I had one bin that was in the process of migrating so that kind of fell out. But the other four, I was trying to feed them all at once. And then as of four days ago, now I've got a fifth bin. It just started to seem like a bit much so I've now broken them up into little subgroups where the subgroup that I fed yesterday were the two younger of the bins and the two that I'm going to feed today are the two older of the bins. So um, I've got my little list here, my little list that I like to put together once in a while. And it's the same list that I showed yesterday. So some of these values, uh, all the values are one day shy of the actual value. Um, because for example, right here, the two bins that we're going to be feeding today uh, the ones right here that say feed, they're now actually 75 days of age, not 74, and 118 days of age, not 117. And these are the two older of the bins that I'm feeding today. The two younger ones got taken care of yesterday. The, uh, the assortment of foods that I've got for them is very similar to what I fed yesterday. It's just a whole, whole bunch of frozen kitchen scraps. And um, I just figured I'd roll the camera while I'm feeding so we can uh, check them out together. So let's get these guys up on the bench and get to work. All right, so now one thing I've been noticing and commenting on when it comes to these two oldest of my bins is that um, this one, for example, being the older of the two, I don't think it's quite as far along as the second oldest bin. For some reason, I believe that the second oldest bin might have just a greater number of worms in it or whatever the case may be, but it does seem to be slightly more advanced bin in terms of just the overall status of the materials in the bin breaking down. But this bin is no slouch either. So this bin's doing quite nicely as well. So now the one thing that's been happening here in my red wiggler bins as of the last feeding is that we um, initiated the use of a slightly different feeding pattern. In the, in the past I'd always fed all my bins right down the middle. Traditionally that's just my basic way of dealing with the feedings. And I like that approach because then I always know where to look to see where the previous feeding was, to see how it's coming along. But there's also, you know, other approaches to feeding your worm bins. So I figured I would adopt um, one of those different styles for a little while at least. Just to see what kind of an outcome we start to observe in my Red Wiggler bins doing that. So rather than feeding down the middle, we've now started into this pocket feeding. So last time we fed this bin which at this point was eight days ago the food was placed right here in this corner and this piece of a uh, tattered coffee filter is meant to indicate to us that that was the feeding area and i'm going to go clockwise so the next place we're going to feed is right down here but i always like to check out how the previous feeding is coming along so why don't we take a peek in here first and then we'll see how things are looking down in the corner where we're going to feed. Maybe we'll check the other side of the bin as well. I'm trying to remember what the feeding consisted of last time. It may have been very similar to what we're feeding right now. I don't remember offhand. I can smell something in here. I'm not sure what it is. It might be this little stem. The stem has been kind of following our feeding zone around and around, and I believe it's from cabbage. So even though it's many weeks old at this point, it still seems to be holding on to its odor. Even though most of the time in your worm bins, you're not going to smell anything other than a kind of an earthy, fresh scent. Sometimes, depending on the materials that you use in your bins, you might start to observe um, various odors. Um, usually just from the foods that they received previously. So um, cabbage, I guess, is just one of those foods that might take a little bit longer to break down and um, does seem to hold on to its odor a little bit longer than other foods. And um, so, yeah, the, the population of worms over there in that feeding area looks pretty good. I would think that the, the worms down in the middle area are probably pretty plentiful too because that's where we have been feeding up until now 
So, uh, you know, I didn't really remove all of the scraps of food from the middle area when we started changing the feeding pattern. So there's all kinds of leftovers over there that the worms are probably still, still working on. They didn't really feel the need to go chasing after that newest feeding because what they had already was sufficient. And I think that's what we're observing here in the, the feeding area from a couple feedings ago at this point down the middle. And um, that's pretty cool. You know, before we place the feeding in and open up a hole, let's, uh, let's just go ahead and see how the rest of the bin is doing. I, I do feel like the material in here is a little bit damp. You can kind of see how it's a little bit sticking together. Not too bad. It is crumbling, but it is sort of sticking together at the same time. And I, um, I just want to make sure that there's sufficient ventilation and airflow. So I don't want the material to sort of get, you know, compacted too much or too gooey and nasty so here and there i like to till things up a bit at the same time we get to get to see how the worms are doing elsewhere in the bin too so things look pretty nice all around everything does have kind of a, a pretty um damp feel to it because we've been covering up with a piece of plastic not allowing any moisture at all to evaporate out of here or very minimal amounts so it's not surprising that you know, every time we add some food, you know, such as these frozen foods that we're going to be adding today, it's not surprising that um, the moisture that comes along with those food items just remains in the bin and remains in the material. But I want to keep it nice and damp and cozy that way for the worms, at least at this stage, because there is a lot of stuff like this in here, as you can see throughout the material. There's a lot of these leaf stems, little sticks, stuff that I think is going to require a fair bit of moisture to break down. You let these things dry out and the worms are not going to be able to chew through that stuff. So I um, I do want to keep things nice and damp in here, at least until such a time that I start to see fewer bits of um, tougher materials like this. Otherwise, you know, I'll, I'll have to just wait and wait and wait until all those little sticks and stems from all the leaves break down too. So typically I would just, um, at this point now, I think just steer more towards using softer, type bedding materials that have a greater chance of breaking down more quickly than leaves, or at least more specifically the stems of leaves. So I'm just trying to grab those couple items that we encountered along the way. I just found a little piece of cardboard here, but I wanted to grab this um, coffee filter that was indicating where we fed, as well as this stem. Usually I want to just keep stuff where the previous feeding zone had been so we could just check back on them. But whatever, I've already excavated this little piece of stem. We're going to stick it down here with the um, the fresh food. Maybe we'll put these little collection of stems too, these leaf stems down there too. But before we um, start with that, I'm going to grab a couple pieces of paper. They're old coffee filters, and one of them we'll use to mark where the feeding zone was because we've you know pretty much trashed the um, the feeding zone indicator that was there already. So um, why don't I See if I could plop today's feeding into a couple of these pieces of paper before I drop it in here. I think it's uh, I think it's beneficial because the uh, the food itself, all the kitchen scraps, are kind of a nitrogen-rich food source, whereas the paper and the um, cardboard leaves, things like that, are all sort of the balance to that, a more carbon-rich food source. So got a banana peel here we can add in. So I think uh, I think that about accounts for about half of what we've bought down here. But I think the other bin that we're feeding might have a, a slightly larger population. So if, if we save a little bit of this, um, perhaps more than we placed in here, that should be fine. Because I think the other bin that we're going to feed has a slightly greater number of mouths to feed. But yeah, I think things are looking really nice in this bin. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna take some time, I think, a, a few more feedings before we might want to consider starting to steer this uh, bin towards harvest completion. Uh, one of my telltales is going to be the you know presence of these little sticks and stems. So my hope is that over the next few weeks, that stuff really starts to break down considerably and then hopefully ending up with a much finer material 
in, in here. So um, I bought one extra indicator to show where we last fed. And this time it was down here in this corner. And we can start covering things back up here. Bring back this newspaper. Good thing I folded it in half. This little guy right here was left on the paper to hang out. But probably didn't bother him too much because he was in a nice dark, damp spot by being on that piece of paper. So now the next bin that we're feeding is not as old as this one. This one does seem to be a little bit behind the next oldest bin. So the 75 day old bin that we're going to bring out here is the one that I think might even surpass this bin, might be ready for harvest even sooner than this one, even though this one is weeks older. Let's get that one out here now. Yes, that's right. So here we are now this this is our 75 day old bin. The one we just fed is the older of the two, the 118 day old bin. And I get these mixed up because um, this one does have the appearance of a much older bin, a much more mature bin with the material just looking more broken down, the overall just condition of the bin seeming like it's closer to being ready for harvest. And I've, um, I've kind of suspected that it might be because I believe that this bin has a greater population in it. We even went so far as to use volunteers from this bin to launch off my newest red wiggler bin not too long ago so uh so i thought that the number of worms in here would be reduced by some when i did that and then they were naturally because we did take worms out but um i still feel like this bin has a, a really dense population in it regardless of the extraction that we did not too long ago i'm going to follow suit here with uh, what we did before We'll just reclaim this piece of paper here to be bedding when we feed. Even though it is holding up pretty good, we could have just used it again, I suppose. But whatever, we'll go with the fresh one to indicate that we're feeding over here now. We could just use this as extra bedding in the feeding area. But before we get to feeding over here, let's, uh, let's do what we did before. Let's take a look at how the last feeding is progressing. And it's so nice, the material through here is just pure castings and they're not too damp they're just you know rolling right off the tip of my finger as I peel some of it back there's totally a you know a really um, high degree of moisture here that's for sure this is where all the food was and this is where all the worms are breaking the food down but I don't really see many signs of well this might be some signs of the last feeding but just tiny scraps this too I guess would be a piece of it um, radishes basically it was the leaves of radishes but also in this case some of the cuttings of the radishes which i suppose will just take a little bit longer than the leaves themselves but the leaves themselves are um getting broken down quite nicely the worms are all over them they must have eaten up all the leafy matter now they're just going to work the stems down so things in the feeding area look pretty nice that was the last place we fed and we're just going to leave that be and I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that within a few days, there's going to be pretty much nothing left in there. Maybe, maybe those couple scraps of radish might take a little while for them to break down. But um, you saw how many worms were in there doing their job. Prior to us moving into that corner to feed, same thing was the story here, was that we were always feeding down the middle for weeks and weeks. And we didn't make really too much of an effort to extract any of the old food items that were in here previously. So... There would have been plenty of leftovers in here for the worms to work on. So that's part of the reason we're seeing a great number of worms right down the middle as well. But since this is such a bu busy bin, I would not be the least bit surprised if we, um, if we checked this side of the bin as well and found just as many worms hanging out. Because <laughs> it's just such a densely populated bin. There's like tons and tons of worms in here. The one obvious difference is that um, over on this side, since there's been no feedings added, the material is just a little bit drier, a little bit more crumbly, as you could probably see. And you could probably also see that, um, besides being really nice and loose and crumbly and everything like that, 
It, uh, it too still has a good number of these little tiny um, leaf stems in it, but they're, um, they're much smaller. Like they've been whittled down. They've been partially broken down and eaten already. So there's still traces of that stuff in here, but um, not much at all, you know? Okay, I mean, here and there I'll find a bigger one. But for the most part, those leaf stems are all breaking down really nicely. And, uh, and that to me is usually one of the key indicators that a bin is almost ready to go. And, you know, in this case, this is one of my larger size tubs, but I'm so close to the top already too. That's very often an even more um, crucial indicator that it's time to wrap things up in a bin is just that I'm out of space. <laughs> I got nowhere to put more stuff. So it really might just end up being the, the space constraints in the 75 day old bin that um, drive me towards, um, you know, picking one of the upcoming feedings to be the last feeding and just giving the worms a chance to pour through here and, you know, pick out all these little remaining scraps of material and break all that stuff down because they'll not have received any fresh food. But we're not gonna start into that foraging phase quite yet. We're gonna feed regularly. My thought was to maybe go through a few cycles of pocket feeding, maybe at least make one circuit around the entire container before we just decide to start withholding feedings and start driving the bin towards completion. So even in this corner where there was no food applied, you can see tons and tons of worms hanging out. This is such a nice, densely populated bin. So much fun to play around in. Um, and it's so cool how the material doesn't really hardly stick to my gloves. I mean, yeah, here and there it is sticking to my gloves for the, for the most part. It's not, though. It's funny, too, how you try to excavate a hole and then you, you see it all kind of avalanching in because the worms are just squirming nonstop around it. All right, let's see if we can get this next feeding into here. I guess maybe here we'll give them one additional piece of paper wrapping for the food and we'll just use this old piece of paper for that purpose. Also got a banana peel here for them. So let's, uh, let's use this other one here for what remains. I don't even know if this is any more generous of a feeding than the last one was. It seems to be about the same amount. But I do sense that this might be a slightly more um, crowded bin. So whatever, I was going to place this on top, but I've got one extra piece of paper here. Why don't we wrap this in paper too for them. I'm sure they'll appreciate the carbon because the, uh, the amount of residual carbon in this bin is, you know, dwindling at this point. There's leafy matter. There's chunks of cardboard and paper here and there, but not as much as we've seen in other bins. So there's no harm in supplementing it there a little bit, I think. I did start piling up certain things that I located along the way, and I didn't make reference to them as I found them, but you might have saw me picking up a, um, a peach pit, half of an avocado seed, <laughs> what appears to be the, um, the shell of a mango seed, and I think this is also a chunk of mango seed husk. So whatever, I figured I'd throw those into the feeding area too. I didn't really go out of my way to try to find food scraps from previous feedings, but as long as I had those in my hand, I figured I would put them where the center of the action is going to be, and that's going to be right here in the new feeding area. All right, well, that was fun. Before I get things covered up here, I just want to make sure I don't have any worms hanging out on my glove. And... Um, then we can get things covered back up here and let them all get back to work. So, all right, now my red wiggler bins are all fed. And I guess in this case, after eight days, it does seem like it was a timely check-in because there really wasn't a whole lot of the last feeding remaining in there. We saw tiny little scraps, but not much. So here too, it wasn't that big of a feeding. So I'm thinking another week or so before we check in here again. Um, but for now we're done. I've got a little bit of cleaning up to do and putting things away, which I'll take care of after I finish filming. I won't bore you with that. But before I go, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.